We're joined by Cleveland Indians number nine prospect and a member of the 2016 Lake County Captains, right-handed pitcher Tristan McKenzie. Tristan, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. Uh, excited to be on there. Yeah, we're catching you in the middle of apartment shopping in Cleveland. Uh, you're involved in the community, which is is great to see. Of course, part of the Indian 60-player pool. Um, you had mentioned before our call that you're getting involved with the Boys and Girls Club in the area. What have you done in the community? What have you done with them to, to get involved in the Cleveland area? Uh, so, I mean, I've, I've visited the Boys and Girls Club uh, twice on occasion, and I talked to them on a Zoom call earlier today, actually, uh, for the third time, kind of interact with those kids. But a lot of those kids are really, really good, uh, very pure. And uh, I've interacted with them once. I, I went and read to a group of girls that were that was over there. And the other time, I just kind of went and hung out with them. Uh, it's kind of like it was a it was a joy for me. Uh, those kids are so full of life, and just to be able to interact with them on a on a different type of basis instead of seeing them on a on a baseball field, kind of interacting with them in their setting was really cool for me. Yeah, what does it mean to you to be uh, involved with that program? Why did you seek out Boys and Girls Club specifically? Um, so for me, the, the kids don't see me as some minor leaguer that played in Lake County or some minor leaguer that's playing in Lynchburg, Virginia, or the kid that was hurt. They just see me as a Cleveland Indians baseball player, which is kind of the best feeling for me because they don't see me for anything other than what they think I am. And that like, as a kid, I would, I would have liked for someone like that, who, even though I didn't necessarily know what they do or know, know what they did for them to come and talk to me with a mental world to me. So I'm just trying to be the best role model I can be and kind of like help hopefully, you know, inspire some of their goals and some of their dreams. And maybe some of them will, you might see the next Cleveland Indians uh, baseball player coming from, from Boys and Girls Club. Are there any kids in particular that you've really latched onto, stayed connected with and, and talked to throughout your time? Uh, not necessarily. A lot of them were, a lot of them were younger. So I didn't necessarily go out of my way to, to, intrude in that in that fashion I, I played Fortnite with them a couple of times uh but it was it was always different kids at different times one of the other things you mentioned that you've done during your your off time here I don't know if you'd really call it off time but during the <laughs> shutdown uh that we know you're uh, you're an avid fan of is playing video games <laughs> you uh you, you kind of kind of uh showed up some of your Indians organizational teammates there on the sticks. You, you won our player tournament. Then you beat a pro gamer from the Cavs eSports team, Strainer, in a best of three series in MLB The Show. Are you the best MLB The Show player in the Indians organization? Uh, hmm. That's, that is a tough question. I haven't really played a lot of guys. I've played like Juan Hillman. Juan used to, so back in the day, I'm not, this isn't very preview information, uh, but one used to one used to beat the crap out of me in MLB the show. <laughs> uh, but with this most recent one, I think I I took a lot of time and I dedicated myself to it, and I I did pretty well. I did decently well for myself. I I won that tournament by like the skin of my teeth, and then I ended up beating Strainer, and that was after like I had put a lot of practice in the game, so I was very confident in that. How cool is it for you to play a, a pro gamer? Um, I mean. It's something that I watch a lot of Twitch. I watch a lot of like those guys play on YouTube. So for me to play against an actual like professional gamer, it was a different experience for me, especially like knowing how serious they take their craft. You mentioned watching a lot of Twitch. I know you like to stream on Twitch too. Why is that fun for you? Um, I mean, I think it's the same the same reason that I enjoy watching people. I enjoy watching how good they are at a sport or how good they are at what they do and or like I just enjoy hearing them talk or interacting with them in that in that in that sense. And I think that that's why people would enjoy watching me. So you're you're involved in the community with the Boys and Girls Club. You're, you're playing video games, you're streaming on Twitch, you're watching Twitch. What else are you doing to pass the time when you're not training, gaming and, and working with uh, the local youth? Uh, the biggest thing, quarantining, uh, and then watching a lot of Netflix. I just recently got hooked on, like, House of Cards. So I've blown through three and a half seasons in close to two weeks, maybe a little under two weeks. Not very proud of it, but it's a very good <laughs> show. <laughs> Is that your? Has that been your only binge obsession? Anything else that you've gotten really into? Um, I used to watch a lot of Dexter, but it's slowed down. 
down. I'm on season five of Dexter, but I, I crushed the first four and a half seasons, five seasons really quickly. Um, I've watched a lot of stuff on Netflix. I've had a lot of time. Uh, the Jeffrey Epstein documentary, uh, it happened in my, like, my hometown. So that was like, I wanted to like witness what was going on. It was a little before my time, but still. My high school was actually involved in the Jeffrey Epstein documentary. It was crazy to me to see um, some different stuff. What was that like for you to watch that since it was you know, so close to home? It was, so it happened, we, we didn't move down to Florida until probably he was on his way out of doing whatever he was doing down there. But it was really weird for me to like, they had like images of my high school. And I was like, that's so weird to me that I came from this school and I had no idea that any of this was, was going on. It was such a big cover up. It was really, it was really like eye opening to me. Did you end up talking to, to other folks from back home and maybe your, um, your family friends about what they remember from that, if they do remember or, or knew about it? Uh, I didn't really, I didn't really go searching for it. It was, it was, and it was happening a lot on Twitter where people were discussing it, but I didn't really involve in any dialect or conversation with anybody about it. Well, let's, uh, let's shift to baseball uh, and what else you were doing when you were quarantining at home. Where were you staying before summer camp started? Uh, so I, I live at home in the off season. Mom makes good home cooked meals and I'm not leaving those for anything. <laughs> um, but I was at home. Uh, I was training down in Florida at Crescent Sports Performance a little bit, like prior to me coming up here. It's kind of like there's a lot of, there's a lot of pro guys that are training down there. Big names. Justin Verlander's down there. Paul Goldschmidt was playing down there. Um, Noah Syndergaard works out down there. John Carlos Stanton was in there. So there's some big names and kind of being around those guys before summer camp helped keep me focused and kind of like what the end goal was for me this year. You uh, obviously got hurt last year. Um, mm -hmm. So it's been for you even more than everyone else, quite the long stretch since you last played in a competitive game. What's the itch like right now? Give us a bit of a, what's, what's going on in your mind? How ready are you to just actually play a game of baseball? Itch, itch would be an understatement of a word. Uh, I'm, I'm super anti butterflies in my stomach. Just very, I wouldn't even say nervous. It's more excited because I feel like I'm right on the cusp of it. I'm, I'm like scratching at the door. Uh, I'm honestly just really ready to play in a game. And I think that when I do, everything will kind of like just be back to how it was or what normal is in my mind and as a competitor. Uh, I'm just, I'm really excited for it, Wh whether it be tomorrow, hopefully it's tomorrow, even though it won't be, but in my mind, hopefully it's tomorrow, the sooner the better for me. Yeah, I remember seeing you in, in spring training, gosh, like two weeks before the shutdown, and you were ready to put that last year behind you and move forward. Importantly, you said you were feeling healthy, you were feeling good. I know from, from what I've read and uh, folks I've talked to that you seem to be keeping a really positive attitude still through all of this, even after, after missing all the last year and having this year pushed back. What have you been doing for yourself to stay positive? Uh, it's kind of shifting my focus. Uh, I'd say a big thing that I learned as rehab and being hurt is kind of visualizing the goals that are for me it's not necessarily realistic for me to say I want to pitch in the big leagues on the opening day roster maybe I kind of set a more realistic goal like instead of me looking at what I'm going to play what can I do that whenever that time comes I'm ready to go out there and actually give it 110 percent of my best effort and I'm going to be my best self so a lot of what I've been focused on for the past year and a half even with the shutdown has been all right, I can't play right this second, but I can go train. I can make sure my, my body's loose. I can do little things that'll help me. Eventually, whenever that moment comes, I'm going to be 100% prepared and ready. I'll say this. It's a really impressive mindset to have. Um, how did you develop that mindset? Where did this kind of positivity come from? Because, man, that can't be easy. Um, and it's just a, it's an impressive mindset. I'm curious about how that developed. Um, I honestly, it was a process. It's, it's honestly still a process because it's definitely frustrating sometimes when you're, when you're, when you feel like you're capable to play, 
and something or someone is holding you back. Like, let's say you feel good, but your arm's just not having it, or you feel good, but the trainers don't deem it ready because you have to hit a certain series of uh, checkpoints before you're able to play. Uh, I'd say it's, it's just, it's constantly a learning process and constantly me growing as a person, uh, just kind of going through the process of being kind of beat down in terms of having an injury back to back. Uh, I learned a lot of that just through the rehab process and giving, taking what my, what my body was giving me. If my body's saying I'm not ready right now, it's kind of understanding that and moving forward from there. I'll shout out a guy that I know has helped a lot of folks in the Indians organization. And I'm curious if he helped you and, and how he might've helped you with the mental side of that rehab process, Brian miles and his group in the Indians uh, mental skills department. What did Brian and, and those guys do for you personally? Um, how did they help? So honestly, I talked to Brian a lot in terms of how I'd like to attack my mental game when it comes to the baseball side of things. Uh, I want to say I had a lot of talks with him maybe towards the end of the year in 18 and especially in the beginning of the year in 19 in terms of what I was going to do mentally to get ready for being baseball ready in terms of is my body ready and what happens if I can't go out there and play. Um, and we've had some good discussions in terms of like that kind of mindset building in terms of shifting your goals, shifting your focus onto what you can control, control the controllables and control what, what you're able to physically attack in terms of, in, instead of worrying about stuff that you have no control over. Getting ready now to hopefully get back onto the field and, and hopefully be on the mound at progressive fields. I, I know is a, a goal of yours. Um, not only how excited are you, but where do you feel your stuff is at right now? Um, my stuff's ready. Side note. Um, but I'm extremely excited to pitch and progressive, regardless of if there's fans there or not. Uh, I feel like just being in that stadium, there's a lot of history there. There's going to be a bunch of great guys around me. I think regardless of who's in the stands, I'm going to be excited to throw in that stadium. I saw in a Q&A that you did, um, I think either this most recent spring training or last spring, that you said your favorite part of being an Indian is the fans. So I'm curious, what are you thinking with the potential of no fans? How is that going to play into your game and just everyone's game? Um, I mean, I told you I've been apartment shopping recently. Uh, just kind of like these guys, even so like even just talking to the people around the city, if I even mention the, the thought of Cleveland Indians, they're like, oh, how's the season going to go? They're very invested in the Cleveland Indians outside of what's going on. So I feel that the fans may not be in the stadium to support, but the support is still going to be there, which is why I really love this fan base. Does that help you when you're outside of the stadium to have those touch points with people? Even if you're, as we all are, we're socially distancing before this uh, call started, you had a mask on because you're, uh, your apartment shopping, you're out and about right now. How does it help you to still be able to, on some level, virtually or in person, safely interact with uh, with the fans that you're hoping to be playing for soon? Uh, I mean, the, I don't know. It's 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 hard to explain the the feeling you get from the fans, especially when when you feel like you're so close. Uh, the fact that that they could very well know you uh, very soon, hopefully. I, I'm pretty sure Frankie doesn't do stuff like this. Uh, but it's, it's really surreal. I'm going to wrap up on this with you. I'm going to put you in um, a little mental exercise. You're okay. on the mound at Progressive Field. You've got your Indians jersey on. We'll call it the Navy Blue Block C hat. You're staring down another major league hitter who's not in an inter-squad game. We're in the real 2020 major league season. Okay. Where's your head at? What are you feeling? What are you looking around at? What do you see? Uh, so I'd say that a big thing for me, especially when I'm pitching, is to my brim is decently low and my glove is pretty high. So I try and set like a thin line of sight where I only see like the catcher and maybe a little bit of the hitter. Uh, that kind of helps keep me focused on the task at hand and not getting too big around me. Cause I feel like pitching a progressive part 
that's such a big stadium as opposed to anything I've I've pitched in before. Uh, so I feel like kind of setting my sights on what my target is, what my what my goal is, is to get that hitter out. So I'm gonna focus on my catcher and kind of like where I'm where I'm trying to put that next pitch. Hairs on your arm standing up a little bit. Uh, a little <laughs> bit. I don't know. I picture this a lot, so this is just not the point. <laughs> You're you're practiced at this at, at putting yourself in that spot. That's great. Exactly. All right, Tristan. It it was such a pleasure catching up with you. Uh, so glad to see you in in Arizona, and I'm glad to be talking to you again. Uh, we really hope Thank to you. see your progressive field. Uh, thanks so much for taking the time. Always my pleasure. Thanks, Tristan.